<laughs> All right, so we'll call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. So any, any amendments to the agenda? Are we good to make a motion to approve as written? Move to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Just, aye. Yeah, now you have to vote. <laughs> Could be a tough one tonight. Uh, <laughs> um, we, we, tonight we're putting the public comment towards the end, um, being that it's mostly a informational meeting, so we decided to put the public comment at the, at the end of the informational meeting, so I'll make sure everybody has an opportunity to... to um, yeah, I mean, you know how it is. I mean, we're usually, you know, as long as you guys don't get, you know, out of control there, and we, we usually are able to take some questions from the public, so, you know. <laughs> as long as you don't get too rowdy tonight, Ellie, we'll be, we'll take some questions every once in a while, but if there's any other questions at the end, we can take those. So, um, so let's, um, we'll turn over to the, uh, we'll do the town warning, um, and then we'll go through the high levels of the, um, the budget. And, uh, and if anybody has anything that they'd like to dive in a little bit farther into the budget, we can do that. Um, so, uh, let me... yeah, I have my own copy here somewhere. All right, so the warning, as we talked before, so just quickly breezing through the warning, the, the, the usuals, um, electing the town moderator, clerk, and treasurer, the first three. Um, and then we have the, the two select board um, positions that are open, um, Paul's and myself. Um, we have the two lister positions that are open. The so one of those is vacant. So one of them, we, um, Pam Brown currently serves in now, but the other one. Number six. That, yeah, but number six, that is vacant yeah. now. I'm not sure if. Pam is going to run. No, I, I don't get that impression, but okay. <laughs> I don't know. So that one's vacant currently. Or, well, Pam is in it now, but I don't think she's running again, I guess. Yep. Just like Paul's not running again for select board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I to him a little bit about yeah, it. I knew that you had. I have to come in and talk to him some more. Good okay. for you. And, and then we have the, the two in there for the uh, trustee of public funds um, piece, which again, um, Paul's position there of the one-year balance of the three-year term is that one's vacant. Mm -hmm. And I haven't heard of anybody running on that one yet either. I haven't. Yeah, yeah I've heard of one person that is interested in it. Okay. One. And then we have a couple of... Um, oh, that's why I wrote it in the wrong spot. And then we have the budget piece. So 10 is the budget, um, which I'll speak on the budget behalf as normal. Well, somebody else wants to do it. <laughs> I think it's you. To be a last well, you're hurrah, gonna read Paul? The, you're going to read the budget no. summary. <laughs> no, um, when, it, when it does come time for my nomination, I do want to take a couple of minutes and just say some thank yous. Okay. And that's under um, four. Yep. And then we have um, 11, uh, 11, 12. Lisa, are you going to speak to number 11? So you're prepared that you or um, Benton? Yeah, you or Benton? Yeah. Who's going to talk? Ben yep. ben I mean Benton. Sorry. Yes. So because Rick Benson was asking. Do you, do you want to speak before we open it up for? Discussion like it at the introduction of the article, or do you want to wait till discussion time? I don't know. What's typically do people do? Well, usually what happens is the maker of the motion gets first bids on speaking. Okay. So you could either jump right up and move the question, and uh -huh. then you would have first shot, and, and then I'd recognize you to, to, to talk about it. Okay. We can do that. Okay. And do that. if not, if someone beats it to it, I can ask them if they mind. Okay. Most people okay. will be okay. fine with that. Thank you. Okay. I mean, I guess looking at the item, Lisa, I, I would recommend that that somebody talks on that article prior to making a motion. The only reason why I say that is I think I think the discussion is bigger than just this year's 
item for a motion because we talked about you know what does it really take to fund our our library right mm -hmm. and and so that even though we had increased our funds um, in our general fund budget mm -hmm. this extra um, 27.5 which comes up to be a total of um, 35,000 I think 35. so so 35,000 is really the number that the town needs to support to minimally fund the library um, and I think that's kind of an important thing because it sounds like you know I, I think that people just need to understand like if we want a public library if we want a library then this is what the minimum funding is going to be going right. forward right. Um, and it has that good discussion mm -hmm. um, part of it because someone might just think well this is a one-time thing oh that's ridiculous we can't give you that much money or maybe oh that's good it's one time not knowing that this is likely we're going to take that information and right. likely apply it to future budgets right. so um, and, I, and I think I think a majority of people in in the town don't understand um, well one that it's not a town owned library right. um, and two, you know how much it, it does take to fund the library and maybe a little bit of recent history on what you've had to do to fund the library, which isn't sustainable, right. you know? Um, and then like, um, it wasn't Bennett, but there was another gentleman that was talking about minimum, like a library of that size should be $125,000, $150,000 budget. And you guys are working on a $75,000 budget, you know? So we're gathering that information from, I think, uh, Chelsea, Tunbridge, and Rochester were who folks asked about. So we're gathering that information, and what Bethel has been paying for operating costs is minimal compared right. to what they pay. Um, so, and really the idea is to build up the, to be able to get some time and some breathing room to rebuild the investment account. And there's some misconception around town that at one point, we had millions of dollars in the bank, which isn't accurate at all. <laughs> so um, if that comes up, I certainly would want to be able to address that. Yeah. yeah. Do you have some kind of a handout that you're, you're going to have? Yeah, so I think that's the idea, is we were going to put like a handout on people's seats. Yeah. Um, so you just talk handout. Right, I mean, they'll have what's in here yeah. anyway. Yes. Um, but I think mm -hmm. just you know, addressing those pieces um, would be important because people I would have thought would be fairly well educated about it actually have really lots of misconceptions. So I think that one of the biggest misconceptions that kind of has come up to me is the fact that people think that you're town owned and town run and part of the budget already. Right. And, yeah, and it's yeah. like, right. no, they have their own endowment, their own fundraisers, they own their own <laughs> building. and. Right. So it's actually an investment account. It's not really an endowment. Oh, okay. Like Jean brought up last time to be oh, sort of careful true. about that um, language, <clears throat> but yeah, and there's there's a whole way that it went, but we weren't ever really given like this huge lump sum of money. We just got a little teeny bit mm -hmm. based on interest on yep. a trust. Sure, it makes sense. Back so, when interest was, and we're not something. the only ones receiving interest from that trust. Right, so, oh, there you go. Yeah. Gotcha. So yeah, I think that'll be great. So I think the first part is that people realize that you're not town owned. That, that was, even Bennett said, I didn't realize until I you know, yeah. joined the library. Yeah. That, so I do think that's a big thing. So yeah, copies <clears throat> on the chairs, whatever. And if you need copies, you know, we yeah. can make them for you. Just swing by the office. And, and we're gonna have a table out in the lobby. So oh good, you talked to Pam or Kelly yeah, or something. I did, yep. Great. Good. Oh, that'll be great. Yep. Hi. Yep. Hi. So uh, I wrote down. Mm -hmm. So Bennett, Lisa, those will be the library, and yep. who's going to speak to? And I'm going to reach out to Dave Aldrich. Make sure okay. he knows. And then, um, and then twelve is is the um, recreation improvements yes. with the skate park. So yeah. Ellie, are you? Are you <laughs> we we are already um, working on. We do want to present right away. We have in the past, when it's come up in 2016, we did a presentation in 2016, and we want to do a presentation at town meeting this year. Um, so we will want to present right away. 
So will you be doing that? Should I recommend yeah. you for that? Yes, okay. I'll be doing that. And we'll be having uh, um, a table. And uh, as part of Bethel for All, we'll be having a display on the bulletin board outside. Because Bethel for All is getting together and doing it. Services piece of debt. Um, Paul, you yeah, I'll willing to touch base on that again this year? Yeah. Do we know of any identities that are planning to be there to speak or? The only one I've gotten any communication from was Safeline. They sent a note thanking us for the for proposing their appropriation, but I have not heard any, about anybody coming okay. from the agencies. All right. <clears throat> and then 14 is White River Valley Ambulance. Yeah, I'm going to reach out to Dave Altrigetti since he's the representative and make sure he's prepared to okay. speak. And, you know, that one, too, um, you may want to just be prepared to speak on the increase. The increases, because you know, on the budget-wise, the White River Valley Ambulance was probably our largest budget increase, mm -hmm. percentage-wise. So, <coughs> yeah. So there's probably going to be some questions centered around that. Um, and then, and then we have the um, petition piece that was for the Playhouse Theater in Randolph, and I would assume that... I'm going to email Bennett Law and find out if See if, if Bennett wants gonna, to talk if, about it. Yeah, because he's the one who handed in the um, petition. Okay. Uh, and then we got the taxes. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> Teresa's taxes and when yeah. she wants them in by. That's right. So those dates are on there. Um, and then um, then we have the question in regards to the Australian ballot. So Rick, do you need someone to speak to that or are you just going to say we have to vote on it? Are you, are you going to explain that we have to vote from the floor and it's for it to be the next year, or do you want someone else to do that, or? Um, it's up to you guys if, if somebody wants to. Um, it's just yeah, kind of a technicality. <laughs> Dave says you have nothing to do with you. <laughs> I mean, I would assume after it's motioned and seconded, it's gonna be quite the discussion. Yeah, the floor is open then, so. Yeah. And I think that we've answered several questions um, about um, the requirements to pass a paper ballot. To, to go to, is that, am I using the right terms here? To move, yeah, so that I. Because that's that statute in order, in order mm -hmm. that it needs to be, we need to vote. Yeah, so it's seven people is what you said. Oh, oh, you're talking about that part. Yeah. I'll go over that before in my. Okay, all right. Perfect. In my uh, introduction. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is the article or not, but that's my assumption, so. Yeah. All right. I mean, I, the only thing I could foresee is, um, e even though it, it, it appears clear to me in here when people hear Australian ballot they may think oh, yeah. the whole you know the whole town meeting day so so maybe on your end if you can just explain to them that um, that this would just be for the town officers only the you know the budget and all those pieces would continue to be done in person uh, but this is just for you know Boards, the board yeah, directors, just, yeah. and like, moderator, town clerk, yeah, yeah, lister, lister yeah. Um, board. pieces of it. Um, the only thing I was, the only thing that was kind of odd that I was thinking about is, so if you're electing your moderator through that, here. do you have to have the meeting after the, like you would have to have the Australian ballot the day before and then you have your meeting the day after or? Uh -uh. No, so that would be electing them for the following year. Yeah. Because you're, you're elected until a new moderator. Until the next select, okay. Right. Until yeah. the next select. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, you know, thinking, I, it didn't occur to me that this was going to be all town officers. I, I was thinking strictly select board, so, yeah, okay, so everyone who has to, It has to be, it, that's now, the only way I think it can go is you're either, Australian ballot can only be three things, your public questions, budget, or elected officials, so it has to be all elected officials. All elected officials, and all, no matter, because we don't, yeah. Yes. I think it's to see papers. Which is good. And you know, all that stuff that ahead of time. That way, yeah. No, they haven't. Well, I see the benefit for that. Don't yeah. get confused. They have an appointed town clerk or town treasurer. So some towns, if they appoint their clerk treasurer, then of course they're not running. So right. sometimes that goofs you up. But yeah, that's Royalton appoints. Um, but here you're elected, and, and yeah, you run every. Okay. Um, every year, or for certain things, it's so, every year. So Modern yeah, so there will be a couple of things to navigate through on that one. One that it's just separating out the officers, and then what the definition of those officers would be, which would be the ones know. just numbers one through nine. Right. So one through nine, and this year's warning. Well, that's going to shorten up town meeting a bit. Yeah, no kidding. Well, and, and yeah, you're right. It does. Mm -hmm. But if it's it, if it make passes, more work for the BCA and and printing up, you know, you're gonna have to have and a ballot time with the all the different candidates on it. So yeah. It's, yeah. you'll save time there, but you'll spend more time there. True. Sure. But wait and see how it turns out. Mm -hmm. My guess is that'll be a lengthy discussion. Now, will that be a Paper ballot or from the floor? It'll be from the floor. My, I had had to ask Rick how many. Someone asked me how a paper ballot. How do you ask for yeah. a paper ballot? And I had to ask Rick because I didn't know what the magic number was. And he seven said seven or eight seven. or something. Yeah. That's one person has to ask, and seven people have to agree. Affirm it. Yep. Yep. That's what Rick told me. <clears throat> Which I imagine that's probably the way it's going to go. Yeah. I would. I would assume. I would think that would be. Proper way to do it. Too. And I know we took up the question of Australian ballot like I don't know ten years ago, but it was on the it was on the any other business to conduct. It wasn't a formal. Remember we took that like um, under any other business. It was man ten, oh, twelve, 12 years ago. Vote? Yeah, remember we had that and right um, just a hand vote of people that wanted that. Oh. Years ago, but that was a, like an all or nothing. It was type just deal. like a non-binding. Somebody had brought that to the floor, and oh, huh. um, I didn't know that. But we've never formally voted on it. Um, and then we have the um, uh, shall the town uh, provide notice of availability of the annual reports by postcard, um, mailed to all the registered voters at least 30 days prior to the annual meeting instead of mailing the, the report. So the, so um, in order to do that, we have to do it at town meeting day. So that would be, instead of handing out 700 books of town meeting day books, we would send a postcard in the mail to everybody and then they could pick it up at a, a, a you know, at the, at yeah, the office or at the library, library, library or the post wherever, office. Yeah, or whoever we get to agree to collect to that. And I, I think <laughs> the idea behind it is that we usually print off 700 of them and maybe three or 400 of them actually get used and we have a, a whole bunch of leftover um, yeah. books that don't get used and just become a waste of money in paper. Are we going to mail those to those who asked? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, but the only way we can do that is by a question on the floor. So we can't change the, the delivery mechanism um, unless it's voted on the floor. So that would be the... Um, I, on, on the town's end, it'll you know, save some time, some money, and some paper. Um, Postage, printing, that sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll see. Someone actually, it wasn't our idea, that was somebody else came to us and said, hey, do you ever consider doing this? And, oh, right. Um, do, 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 do. And, then, and then we just have the overall discussion items of, of what is being done on Australian ballot. Um, so, which is the cannabis retailer um, piece as well as the bond vote for the water. So I have a question, Rick, about that. I have a question about the um, number one, the cannabis. So it's discussion only 
so, I mean, obviously, we can, people can ask questions. Um, so, it's such a difficult, in a way. Can you do that while you've got people voting on that? Yeah. Again, topic at yeah. the same time in the same building? The only thing you can't do in that regard is if we go to elect the elected officials, um, we can't discuss that part of it. Yeah. In the future. <clears throat> right, but if, if folks but this, are coming in and voting from 7 to 7 on these yep. questions. 8 to 7. Uh, 8 to 7. Pam will hurt you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, she told me to be there at 7. Yeah, she I, wants you there really to set um, up. But yeah. If people are in the building voting on that, is it proper to have a discussion of it? Yeah. And can they hear okay. the discussion from where they'll be voting? No, they'll be out in the lobby. Yeah, that's what I thought. You can't hear it from the lobby. I didn't think so from no. where you vote. So I just, I'm concerned a little bit about, it's such a confusing topic, cannabis, to be able to speak about it articulately. And... Um, Especially what's happened in the news last week. You know that deadly stuff that they're finding in it? Yeah. People are getting yeah. very sick. Well, I just, well, I just saw it a while ago. First three months, $1.6 million in tax revenue for the state. Wow. One so six it's going to be months. talking about, I guess, but, it's, can't it's, but they're not going to tell you how much. The question money. is, are we going to allow retailers? Right. 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 Yeah. We have to just be kind of within zoning. the existing zoning district for retail. Right. We can't zone it out, but it right. only can go in district where it's currently like if retails are currently allowed. Right. Then that would be the. And I guess we, yeah, we need to make sure people are aware of where that is. So. Yeah. And, and it becomes such a, it's a very uneducated topic for people because, you know, the state has the governance over the grow operations, the town has no say in any of that. And then, then the state turned around and pushed it down to the town's level to say if you, if you want to allow a retail establishment or not. So I don't know why they don't. Um, but on our end, the reason why the question has come is, uh, one, it's been a couple of years, and we haven't asked the question, even though the state said they recommended to put it on all the ballots. And two, we do have an identity that wants to put one in mm -hmm. in, in the commercial district. So. Um, so at this point, if we didn't pose the question, they could easily, you know, go get 20 signatures and have it put on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I think the only thing that probably needs to be brought out is if you do allow retail cannabis sales, you have the right to take it away at any time through through yeah, vote, the whole thing, yeah. So you could go. You could go very next year. Someone could petition and say we we don't want to do retail cannabis anymore. So they changed it. And you could change it back. However, if there's any established footprint, so business. if you have a business in town that's already selling it, then you're grandfathered in there until you decide that you're done with it. Yeah. So it's a very tricky thing. If you voted in, it's in, or a retailer is in. Period. Um, yeah. And you. And the town doesn't have any say over that at that point. I mean, right. mm -hmm. townspeople could say we don't want any more of it, mm -hmm. but whatever's in is in. It's, right. it's way so, different than tobacco and liquor and, you know. Mm -hmm. There should be somebody other than me talking about that <laughs> because I'm not. No? Uh, it's not my, <laughs> my, my position to be explaining all that. <laughs> oh, we're getting pumped up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I don't, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think what we really need to do is just have a very short, paragraph or two paragraph statement mm -hmm. okay. that follows the legislation law yeah. okay. of, you, you know, um, what the question really entitles, that it's for retail inside the commercial um, district only. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then I guess whoever talks about it, if it's me or somebody else, can, you know, what that means to us if Okay. If you vote in favor or not in favor of what that does. I can draft something and then send it to mm -hmm. you guys and then uh, to all of you select board members and then you can, you know, make comments yeah. or what do you think it needs or adds or so we'll talk about the zoning. But maybe we'll something about the grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Something very simple. Yeah. Paragraph mm -hmm. that we can talk about that. Yeah. And someone I'm sure hopefully is someone is there, you know, maybe the people that want to open a store, maybe they'll be there so they can answer questions and, um, 
So, um, and, and I'm, I'm assuming that if it's voted down, that it could be petitioned to be put back on the question. Again, next for year. next right? year. Right. I mean. Well, and I'm not sure actually. I don't know if we would. I don't know if it has to wait for town meeting or if we have to do. Special meeting. Yeah, I'll have to look. I mm. can't remember. It could be a tricky one because I think a lot of the comments. This is the only agenda item that I've had some comments on over the last month or so. And a lot of the comments don't follow exactly what the question reads. So that's, yeah, that's uh, I think there's a disconnect on thinking that the town has or the town's people have the authority over marijuana in the town. And it's not that. It's just the, the, the retail sale of it, not the grow and not, mm -hmm. you know, um, there's already rules in place about public usage and things like that. So. So okay. I think it's wrong. I think what they put in the, in the in their legislation is wrong. So you don't want me to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to be the spokesperson? No. All right. <laughs> it's one of those you know kind of the horse type deals. All right. So and maybe, and maybe it'll change at some point. Yeah. Maybe, but yeah. until it does. Yeah, I'll, I'll I print out. Um, it's interesting how the state's the only one that gets any money out of this, isn't it? I mean, we get the uh, whatever permit fee. Permit fee of which we don't know what it is for a retailer for a grower. <laughs> Twenty we got, bucks. We got two hundred dollars for the grower. <laughs> it's like permit. oh god, yeah. That's a one-time fee. I kind of thought so because it was two hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, I can't not, say uh, for sure, um, but yeah. Okay. Well, we'll work on us. So we get to work on the cannabis one. Yep, I don't know. All right, between Teresa and I, we'll figure that one out. Okay, okay. we'll figure. We'll draw out. straws if we have to. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling I know which well, one let's I'm going to get. Well, let's see. Well, it's pretty easy. Gene's not here tonight. Yeah, yeah. Lily's not here tonight. Yeah. So. One of them. <laughs> yep. Not so. here, get elected. Right. Yeah. Okay. You can be volunt like voluntold. Like no. Yeah. <laughs> You're voluntold. Uh, and, and then Article 2 is in regards to the, um, the bond for Phase 2 of the water project. So the only thing, if I remember it correctly, please, if I'm wrong, the only thing the select board or I cannot say, we cannot say vote yes. Right. We can talk about it and answer questions, but the select board cannot say go vote yes on this. Right? Isn't that the rule about that? Well, that's what I'm saying on either one of those. You can't really. Oh, well, we, yeah. We're yeah. just saying to answer questions, right. not yeah. give your opinion. Right. The, the yeah, town, you, you know. Right. Well, I think, I think yeah, like, in the right. cannabis one, I think it's OK for individuals to understand what the yes versus the no vote gives them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't endorse one of them. No, right. exactly. Right. But you could say, you know, yeah. if you do vote yes, then someone can sell retail marijuana. Um, and if you vote no, you know, then they can't. However, if you vote yes and then you want to take it back at another time, those, those retailers are already grandfather clause in. Um, I think it's that helpful to yeah. know that. I think the water one, we just, I, I think it's, you know, to read the read the article and yeah. Hopefully, I don't think you really need a discussion. No. Well, I like on I that, like the information we? in here about how the last one went, how it got financed, mm -hmm. who's paying for what. Yeah. And yeah. this was very clear at the end of this one about, okay, the users are still going to pay for this new water project, but the town's going to do the infrastructure. Yeah, we're yeah, going to pay the roads. Of it. Yeah. So it's we're doing something. We're not technically pay, paying for the water upgrade. Right, we're only, yeah, the the, pay, yeah. the roads, the tax people are paying for just the road work, which they would have anyway. So yeah, we, so we put this out on the website. It's on, there was a link to Front Porch Forum, Facebook, um, so that it's out. So, uh, and um, Mike Mayner is um, coming next Monday for the, you know, the big bond informational. He's gonna come um, from Aldrich and Elliott. So he hasn't been in front of the select board in a while. And so mm -hmm. he's gonna, talk about too and he's coming Wednesday at noon and he and Richard and I are gonna sit down and go over all the plans. This this I don't know who put this together. Mike Maynard, yeah. Aldrich Lane. It's short to the point mm -hmm. in English. No. Yes, it's very nice. Yes, he did a good job. Yep. Oh this is kind of funky when you put that and you go to the next one. It's upside down. Oh I might have given you this the wrong one. That's a special one just for you. That's <laughs> kind of, I made a stamp. I did want to see how it's Oh, it's got to go this I way. Right, oh, we I pick see. a better one off. <laughs> but um, I also sent it to you guys as a PDF. Yes, yeah, so I saw it. Yeah, yeah. That's very nice. So, I mean, unless you have a different opinion on it, I think if, if it's 
the article's just read the way it is, well, as noticed that there is the waterline vote and here's what the article is and yeah, it's out front to be voted on, you know. There's stuff in town. I mean, we certainly can answer questions. Right, because I'm sure there may be somebody who doesn't make the hearing, yeah. which always happens, mm -hmm. that will have questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I don't know if it would be worthwhile mentioning the fact that we're doing something in three or four years that we should have been doing over the last 40 or 50 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it looks like a big hit, and we should have done it differently. But if we don't, no, we are going to pay for it without any help. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and this is the tail end of what we have to do to, to um, for now, unless they to keep our operating permit with the current operating um, permit we have right now. But once it's restrictive. we do this, yeah. yeah, they'll release that portion. But just remember, they do that sort of review every couple of years. Couple of years, yeah. so it doesn't mean to say they won't add that restriction right. back on later. But mm -hmm. we are, you know, yeah. Dana Nagy does seem like if we pass the bond vote, that he'll be maybe willing to take it off, mm -hmm. you know, sooner. So. I was thinking about cannabis, Rick. We could, if people want to see the zoning maps, you could send them to the planning commission table and tell them on the way that people are there looking for members. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you could do a sales pitch from the. <laughs> Wait, the recruiter. There. Yeah, well, we're going to be. We're trying. So. So, is there any further questions in regards to the, the warning for town meeting day? Can't change it. Any, we can, you know, we can take your questions. At this point, it's, it's it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's been printed. Um, so, so it looks like. So the only homework that we have is um, that Teresa and I will um, figure out whatever our statement will be for the cannabis retailer mm -hmm. um, piece yeah. of it. And I'll email Bennett about the Playhouse and talk to Dave Baldrigetti to make sure he's prepared to speak on. White River, uh, yeah, yeah. Ones. okay. Mm -hmm. I think we're pretty good then. Yep. All right. All right, and we will go through to the budget. So, did everybody get their town report? Oh, good. Yes. All right. I wasn't sure. Apparently, the school one is mail, just... a slow mail. Yeah. Not everybody's getting mail every day, so I just want to make sure. I, I don't get my mail every day anymore. No, and that's why we were yeah. concerned about town report because some people are only getting their mail once a week, so we were just want to make sure. Did anybody get their school one in the mail? I no, heard that maybe I, that got mailed out today or maybe I late last got week. My so that one should be coming because I saw an advertisement for it today that it that has been put out there. The town report. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I haven't and seen one. Did you box. get the gold colored mailer about the water mm -hmm. bomb? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I get that one quicker. Oh. I got that. Yeah, we were. I got this, that's great. But I didn't get the school. Okay. Well, at least we we just were concerned about. I know Dave had <clears> mentioned <throat> if he didn't get mail, so as he didn't get it for every couple weeks. So yeah, mine comes about sure twice a week or so now, but I've heard it's going to be more yeah, regular. I get mail every day now. All right. Congratulations <laughs> to you. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, well, great. I just want to make sure everybody got it. So budget-wise, I'll go through uh, the higher levels, what's kind of moving the budget in one way or another. Um, if at any point when we're kind of strolling through this, if you have a question, um, just put your hand up, and I'll try to get you as I see you. And, um, so uh, the first part of the revenue end of things, revenue um, year over year, so that's the local revenue that we raise in town, not tax revenue. Um, that revenue um, has gone up about $56,000 over last year, of which pretty much all that $54,560 of it is through the sale of the transfer station. So um, the town of Bethel had sold its interest in the transfer station in July. Um, so Royalton has uh, full interest in that now. And we had um, worked out a deal with them over a period of time, which is five years, that they will buy our interest out on that. So so we, right now for the five years starting this coming budget no, season. Last year, we already got 54000 We'll have $54,560 for five years. So that buys our interest out. Um, 
So that's good on the revenue side. Um, that's pretty much the only thing that really, the revenue doesn't usually move very much in the town. Um, so that is that. Uh, when we get to the cost and things, you know, there's a lot of movers on the cost and things. And um, so the cost, you know, a typical year, you'll see maybe the cost of our budget, cost, cost of our budget may be changed by, you know, $100,000 at the most. Um, usually it's less than that. And this year the cost of our budget has moved 263000 So, um, So it's a significant move cost-wise. Um, and we'll get through this on how that actually impacted us on the tax rate and, and why, why things impacted us or didn't impact us as much as we thought. So if we start breaking down that, you know, the question would be, oh, we went up 263,000, what, what is that, right? So the high levels of that, um, and if you wanna write it down or if you have questions, just put your hand up, but, so the movers of that, $35,000 of that is just on benefit increases. So that's, that's the, um, um, the benefits that we play, pay our employees. So $35,000, which benefits went up about 21%. Mm -hmm. um, so 21% on our workforce has gone up. Um, then you add in some things for retirement and a couple other benefits. So, so $35,000 is benefit package. Yes, Dave. Um, um, that 21%, I think it should be clear that the big hunk of that 21% was the retirement that we, we were forced to increase, we didn't give them a 21% raise. No, 21, our in health insurance premium Just went up 21.5%. Oh, yeah, help, but it wasn't like we gave them no, money. No, 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 no. Because that's what someone's gonna think. I'm yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying, that's a good point. No, it was uh, health insurance premium went up 21.5%. We budget for a small increase. Uh, we got a big hit two years ago, was it? Two on budgets, retirement. Two budgets ago on retirement, mm -hmm. even though the state has the same fiscal year we do. They came out with it late mm -hmm. after we'd all... And we're, and we're sustaining budget. that. We're sustaining that, but right. we, um, I did, we created a little buffer there and hope if we got an increase, it won't be big. And that no, salaries, ought, you know. So you're right, it does well, sound just, like... I'm just thinking point. that might be a question that needs mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so these are just, you know, uncontrolled costs that are, are, um, are sent from the state to the carrier to, yeah. to the, in our case, the customer. Yeah. Um, $80,000 of our budget, uh, which is, a, is the largest part of our budget that has increased, is due to what we're calling inflation pieces. So just like you saw, if you filled up your car or went to the grocery store, a lot of the things that we use in the town have gotten more expensive. Um, some of those biggest um, movers are, uh, like salt, for instance. So um, a few years ago, we were using almost $100,000 a year in salt. Um, and most of that was just we were throwing salt on all of our problems. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we were able to dial back the salt usage to about $60,000. Well, that same $60,000 of salt last year is now worth $100,000 worth of salt now. Uh, you know, a lot of that is in just the commodity of salt. It's the transportation of the salt, you know, so everything's gotten more expensive on, on that. Um, other pieces that are in that 80,000 are things like diesel fuel for the trucks for plowing or, or, or maintenance, um, uh, heating, heating oil prices for the buildings. Um, so those are a lot of the, you know, then you get into some of the supplies that go up and, and those types of things. So, so $80,000 of the budget really are things that unless we change the services that we give the town, it's the cost that just went up due to everything that's been going on over the past year. So um, we chose as a, as a board to not reduce any services um, to the community, but to pay the increased inflated costs of those services to have them. Um, $60,000, uh, the next is, um, we have had, um, Therese has done a really good job of, of landing us some grant money. So we have a lot of projects in town that need to get done. So not just the water job, but we have other um, projects that we have been successful of getting money from the state. Um, and, and those projects come with matching money. So usually they'll say, we'll fund 80% of your project, but you gotta come up with the other 20%. So it's, 
they're really good deals for us because that's, you know, 80% money that's coming from, well, it does come from our pocket in a roundabout way, but, you know, it's not local money that comes from it. So we were able to secure a grant for, um, for redoing the 0.8 miles of Christian Hill Road, so the paved part of Christian Hill Road that if you've driven down that, it's, you know, pretty bad. Um, so we were able to secure that, that it's actually out for bid now. Yep. Um, we were able to um, secure a loan, well, a grant through uh, Bernie Sanders um, for some of the work on Sand Hill. So Sand Hill is a two-part job. So the first part of it is in the water bill, which is replacing some of the water infrastructure. And then the second part of it is, you know, if anybody's driven up Sand Hill Road lately, yeah. is, you know, the blacktop, the drainage, all those pieces need to be improved. So, so we were able to get money from Bernie Sanders that comes again with a match. Yeah. Um, so, we got so he gave us six hundred thousand dollars, and we get to match it with a hundred and fifty, hundred and something. So, um, granted, we're not matching it all in one budget cycle. It's things that either we already have saved for, or things that we continue to save in our our cycle. Uh, we also um, was able to get a grant to replace the sidewalks um, that go from the school up to um, up to the triangle on Pleasant Street. Um, so if anybody's walked down those sidewalks in a long time, they, they're very narrow. The, um, you know, the, the curb might only be about that tall now. <laughs> so there's a lot of issues. The water sits on the sidewalks. There's a bunch of issues through there. So that was another one that we were able to secure mm -hmm. um, some funding for that. That comes, again, with some grant money. And that's, that's a longer grant. That yeah. can take three to five years because the, the money comes with, bike ped grant comes with, you have to do a study. So we have an engineer and so we're just, I'm actually just reviewing that RFP now. And um, so that will get put out to bid and um, with a couple of, with a couple of pre-approved people for free, from free Terrence list, but it's gonna be a study first. So you're not gonna see sidewalk construction. Probably for like two years. That'd you know. be my guess. Yeah, but again, what we do is when we're putting all these projects into usually a 10 year grid is we, we look and see how much funding do we need at certain periods to, to keep that flowing. So, um, so that comes with it. We also have a, a Peavine uh, Boulevard culvert replacement that, that needs to be done that we have secured the funding for that. Um, again, that's probably gonna be one that- That'll be in the spring of 2024 yeah, because we couldn't, it's a small, it's gonna be, a, it's a small bridge. It's on uh, Peavine. Like when you come down Sand Hill, if you're gonna bank left and come back, it always floods and freezes. But because we're gonna do the Sand Hill project this year, you know, when the bond passes, so I can't have both roads closed at the same time. So we'll do that one in 2024. Also a page in town report, I think lists all the grants. And we did put that page in there 12. as well. Yeah. Page 12 lists all the grants. So yeah. there's other ones we're doing too as well. Um, Wright Road, Macintosh. Um, so unless you live in Liliesville, we'll probably gonna be, or East Bethel will be tearing up your road at some point or somebody's <laughs> road near you. So I apologize yeah. in advance for the inconvenience, so. So those are, you know, those are, you know, some of the jobs that we're <laughs> looking at doing and those, where the match money's at um, for this year. We have um, about $30,000 of, of the cost is um, some things that we've changed at the highway department. So. Um, two things we've changed at the highway, pro well, the, the major complaint and or what we've seen is our gravel roads. Um, so we typically don't have a lot of gravel on our gravel roads. We've graded them so much that we're down to nothing. Mm -hmm. um, all the good infrastructure has been graded to the side of the road at some point. So we've looked at, um, you know, how, how many years does it take to, you know, sustain your roads? And on a gravel road, it's about seven or eight years. Every seven or eight years, we should be doing something to those roads. And, and I'm sure right now, a lot of you are sitting there going, well, I haven't seen anything in seven or eight years, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so that's, that's, where we're, that's where we're heading. So, um, so we increased some money in the budget to, to start appropriating the right amount of money to do our gravel roads in the right cycle. Um, the second piece of that is it, it connects to the gravel roads, but it is more so winter maintenance. So winter, a lot of times, as you see us, will spread sand on dirt roads. And as you've all seen on the, in the winter time, that that sand just turns to muck, right? Um, and it creates no structural stability for the road. So that sand just 
turns to mock or it's at the at the side of the road and it's it's just winter maintenance only um, we are trying uh, a manufactured sand so uh, natural sand is usually round round stones has a lot of um, um, a lot of fines in it so that's why it, you just see it turn to muck after that gets slimy. yeah well it depends on where you get it <laughs> but yeah the so we've been using some manufactured sand this year so sometimes you might not it may look like we're not putting a lot on the roads but what it is mm -hmm. is actually stone chips um so you don't see it as much but it, what it does it kind of locks into the um frozen sub base and stays longer um, as well as when it's done it it helps with this um, structure integrity of the road so you're in a sense, adding some gravel to your roads in the winter time, um, rather than just putting a product down that's only good for the winter. Now it costs more money, so we're mm -hmm. we're we're monitoring that to say, yeah. it, it, is the extra cost worth the trade-off of, mm -hmm. you know, um, of that? So we're we're looking at it, but it does cost some money. So that that's some things that we uh, we feel confident that yeah. will be worth our money as a town. And I think we're seeing, going to see, you know, on the road when it gets a little warm and. You know, the organic, the sand that had a lot of organics would get really kind of slimy first. So mm -hmm. I think without that, and we have had quite a few phone calls about people saying there's no sand on the road, but we're like, it's just not, the organic sand was much darker and you could drive down the road and see that they had sanded. And so it's this manufactured sand is lighter in color, so you don't see it as much. So yeah, we're hoping that, um, that it's a positive change so that we're not scraping it all out of the ditches and <laughs> that it's actually working on the road base. So those are just some changes that we have, have done. The, we added um, some money to the constable budget. So the, um, the discussion at the select board here over several months has been a combination of what we currently budget and what we currently are getting for service. So you know, the, the service that we have um, or the service that the citizens had asked for that we are supposed to be guaranteeing is is 20 hours of service a week. Um, the challenges that we have with that is we've always been a town that we've been able to either share constable resources with other towns or what we've been doing the last three, four years now is we have a part-time constable that comes from another identity to do some work. Um, over the last couple years, it's, all these identities are short-staffed so what they do is they offer their existing staff, you know, overtime and and typically they get paid a lot more to do that work than they do working as a constable. Um, so what we had done at the select board was we have been evaluating, not changing our policing policy, but just changing our, you know, try to get that 20 hours that we've promised everybody. So we've done anything from we've met with the uh, Windsor County sheriffs to see if we did a contracted patrol with them, what that would look like in our budget, um, which was roughly about $125,000 if we wanted to do that. And, yeah. and our budget is normally somewhere around 50,000 for the constable, so it would be a significant increase to do that. Um, so we had decided at this point that we didn't feel that that was um, financially stable for our town. Um, so at, at the end of a bunch of options, what we decided to do was take another look at what we currently are um, paying our constables and try to make that more competitive so that they would want to pick up those hours. Um, so that's the extra $10,000 in our budget is to set a, a price that is competitive so that they will come in and provide the services that we're asking for. And the second piece of that is Teresa has already reached out to them to get them to make that commitment to sign up for those hours, which that's, you know, yep. we're working through that right now, yeah. so. Because one of the things too was, um, at least Justin, our second constable, some of the, because there was such a shortage of police officers, we had at least one constable was on mandatory overtime and he didn't have hours to give, you know, during COVID and then another there were short, short staffed. staffed yeah. So we, you know, when you take someone who works for someone else, which is a great benefit to us because their boss is making sure they get all the right trainings and that they're up to date and all that. We end up, um, you know, their commitment obviously is to their first mm -hmm. agency that's given them all the bennies and the regular hours, so. Um, so there's a good trade off of the extra 10,000 is not only just to, to get us competitive with the other identities, it also brings our total budget 
closer to if we wanted to do some contracted services with, say, the Sheriff's Department, not maybe a full-time thing, but maybe if we wanted to do some selective things that we would have that option mm -hmm. uh, without going to, like, one way or the other. So it kind of puts our town in the middle, um, and I think it's something that we still have to um, see how this year look goes. at, evaluate, see how that goes, um, and then, you know, decide, you know, next year. You know, at this, you know, next year's budget, uh, how well that's going or not going. So, so. in October, we'll be having um, the same conversation and being able to see what the constables were doing. Mm. Would they able to come to their commitment and see what happens? And as as um, mm. as we were talking about prior to the meeting starting, was, you know, the, you know, our friends to the north in Randolph are are, you know, uh, going to be voting to put their police department back into commission, and and what that brings with it is. Um, over a hundred percent increase in their budget, and yeah. um, it, it, somewhere in that they were paying like four hundred and something thousand dollars. It's now going to be seven hundred and something thousand. So there's, there, you know, so big, big numbers that we're talking, um, and and we're not on that scale. But you know, if we would have taken to go to the sheriff's department, we would be talking going from fifty to one hundred and twenty-five, which is a big jump for our town. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're gonna we're gonna try this and see how this works yeah. and 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 make some adjustments to that. The uh, White River Valley Ambulance. So over the last I don't know ten five to ten mm, years, we haven't had big. The adjustments to that budget have been actually very light. Um, we haven't seen very big dips. I think what maybe six or eight years ago. Does that sound right, Rick? We had I think they tried one point to increase the budget drastically one year, and then there was a lot of discussion around that, and I think it ended up coming down a little bit, but there was a significant increase to the budget this year. Um, so on our end of things, um, you know, we typically spend around $120,000 a year for that service that's now going to go up by $26,000. So it's, it's a, you know, 20% jump. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of that is directly related to wages, benefits. Mm -hmm. um, Same as ours. Yeah, yep. pieces of it. So. It, it becomes yeah. that thing. There's a shortage of doctors, nurses, mm -hmm. EMTs, and so making things more competitive so that they have good trained staff. Mm -hmm. But then you had all the benefits and things like that that were increased. So yeah. from what we were told and what you can see on, do you have what page the what your Valley Ambulance is? You can see if you're looking through there where a lot of their figures have changed is in around their salaries and benefit uh, pieces of it. Um, what their pages through, toward yeah. the toward back them. of it there and also too Bethel is you know Randolph is the first biggest user and then Bethel's right behind yeah. them so they obviously six yeah so, there, so there'll be a several pages back there for what your valley ambulance so you if you're looking through there you'll see that a lot of it lines up with the wages and benefit um, pieces of it um, and then the last twenty-two thousand dollars is what what I would say is normal things that we look at. <laughs> That's a chance. So the last twenty-two thousand is what what is kind of a typical year we're looking at, and that is things like, you know, uh, wage increases for our employees, um, supplies, you know, those those types of things that change a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, some appropriation money changed, um, like we talked about, some extra money that we appropriated for the library, um, getting getting some appointee, um, uh, appointment um, salaries, um, some things like that um, changed that other 22,000, so. Um, the important piece of it, if we turn to page, Get it here in a second. Where's your um, rate calculation page? Oh, um, am I not seeing it? For the okay, it is page and I have the index. Let's see. Probably around 54. Yep, okay, if you turn to page 54, so that's kind of where the, you know, when we start talking about revenues going up and costs going down, or costs going up in this case, is what does that really mean for, for my home, 
you know, how much comes out of my pocket. Um, so we had um, established a few years ago, um, a few years ago we had established at the board level that that we hadn't been planning enough for the future um, to, to get said services, we believed that a budget should be at a certain amount and, and also talked about what a fair increase in budget a year would look like for citizens. So, so we typically kind of talk on a, a 3%, uh, which is close to like two to three cents on a tax rate increase a year is, is kind of um, flows well with services and costs um, piece of it. Um, last year we had proposed. Um, last year we had proposed roughly um, around a two percent increase mm -hmm. that ended up being nothing um, because the grand list went up. So the grand list. Um, so the grand list is kind of the, the bible of of the town when it comes to your real estate and and looking at um, your budget. Um, typically the grand list really don't move a lot. Um, you know, the grand list is roughly $2 million. Um, it, you know, it might move down by just, you know, a couple thousand dollars or up a couple thousand dollars. But the way the market has been with real estate is a lot of grand lists have changed in one way or another here in the last couple of years. So right after Irene, our grand list changed a little bit to go downward because we lost some residents or buyouts due to FEMA and things like that. And then last year, our grand list grew faster than anyone would have anticipated. So where we thought we were going to be increasing um, a 2% <coughs> increase, which actually came out to be two cents, gets confusing sometimes, two and two, but um, it, it didn't go anywhere. So it was a, it was a neutral year for, a, for us at the town. Um, this year, kind of just breaking down the budget um, so the base budget, uh, if you go to the warning, which is um, Article 10. Yes. So if you look at Article 10, what Article 10 means for you, um, and it gets a little confusing, because Article 10 includes Article... Um, no, it only includes Article 10, because 11, 12, and... 13, we're all get added on later. Just right, like on the, but, if, yeah. but if you put into play what the normal services are, so mm -hmm. Article 10 plus your White River Valley Ambulance and your human services, yeah. um, what we're looking at is about um, a 2.3 cent, sorry, 2.8 cent increase in your um, taxes. 2.3, sorry, 2.3 um, cent increase in our taxes. Then there's, then there's the three add-ons in, in the warning, which is, which is the, um, the extended amount for the library, um, the extra amount for the skateboard park, and then the $1,000 for the, the Playhouse Theater. Um, if, if all three of those are approved, then that increases it by another 2.8 cents. So if, if everything gets approved, then cents wise on the tax rate would be just over five cents, um, which would be that. So, and, and roughly right now, our grand list, the way our grand list is, or where we anticipate our grand list to be, that every $21,000, so if you see $21,000 of cost go up or down, that's one penny on, on the tax rate. So when, when you're thinking at home, um, the, the, uh, the median home in, Bethel is roughly well. We did here two hundred uh, fifty thousand. So if we set a quarter million dollar house, you know each cent is roughly about one hundred and fifty dollars a year. So if you think of one penny on the tax rate is one hundred and fifty dollars that you pay a year um, to the town more. Um, so right now, if everything gets voted in, um, you're looking at just over five cents. So that's you know you'll be at six hundred. Six hundred, seven hundred dollars more that you would pay in for taxes a year, if you look at the. If you had a two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That does not yeah. count if you have a prebate. Obviously, this yeah. is just straight up taxes. Um, if you look at the base, if you look at just the base town budget that doesn't include the add-ons, um, then you'd be going up roughly two cents, or a little over two cents, which is 
about three hundred dollars a year. So that's kind of how that plays out. Yes, Ellie. Is that before the reappraisal? Yeah. So, so it is before the reappraisal. Yeah. Yeah. It's, this is this takes an effect and doesn't and. And so that's before the reappraisal. Yep. Right, because the road reappraisal is going to be a, is a two-year process. And we will, and our town July. will be starting a, a reappraisal in July. In July. Oh. So typically, well, usually it's, it's often good to do a reappraisal every 10 to 12 years. Um, or there can be some factors that will trigger an a reappraisal earlier. Um, <coughs> So the reappraisal really is just establishing a new, ba a new baseline for everybody. Okay. Um, and then once that baseline starts being adjusted by the economy and, and the way things are being purchased or not purchased, um, that can go up or that can go down. Um, and you probably saw something that in the legislation right now they're actually talking about reappraisals because, um, because everybody's appraisals um, town-wide have changed um, so dramatically over the last year and a half that it is getting at those rates where those automatic reappraisal lights need to go off and you need to do something. Now, the town, our town had, um, had already, um, well, we hadn't anticipated what's going on now, but we had looked at what was going on in our town and said, we're due for a reappraisal. So the last two town meeting days, we've talked about that. We started a reappraisal fund locally to match the state funds. So, so we've already contracted that out and we're already starting that process. Mm -hmm. So what that reappraisals, a lot of people, a lot of times scares people and they say, oh, that means I'm paying more taxes. And, but what the reappraisal means for a, a large majority of people is it means we start a new baseline. Uh, you'll have some people on each side of that spectrum, very small amount that maybe either just barely built a house that might be getting uh, appraised at a very higher level now, that theirs might come down a little bit. And then you might have somebody that might have done work to their house before the last appraisal. Let's say they, you know, did a lot of inside, you know, um, changes to their house that maybe brought their value up, that now would get, you know, that theirs might go up a little bit. So you're gonna have people that go, a little bit of people that will come down, a little people that come up, but most of us are gonna be flatlined. Yeah. Just starting a new um, a new baseline for us because think zoning permits drive the grand list to an extent now. So obviously, if somebody builds an addition, a garage, etc., they have to get a zoning permit. But if you've remodeled your entire inside of your house and you have a brand new kitchen and master bath and this and that, that is not we don't know about that. So it hasn't affected the value. Mm -hmm. So that's something that a reappraisal will do. It will you know kind of make it catch everybody up. So if you have, maybe your house needs more depreciation because it's, uh, you know, been, it's 20 years older and no work has been done to it. So maybe that house needs a little more depreciation than it currently has. So it kind of levels the playing field and also creates a new, you know, land schedule and things like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's a positive thing for Bethel. Mm. What, what about, <clears throat> Environment, well, not environmental, but like uh, heating things that supposedly you get rebates for efficiency and things like that. Normal, I guess, home improvements or home. Does that affect your tax? No, I, I don't think that will affect anything. No, not as far. I think. That's just general. So, well, maintenance. Yeah. Yeah, it's just general maintenance, right? Yeah. yeah. I think Rick can answer yeah. that. Some, it's better. If someone has a brand new furnace, is it? No. 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 Yeah. Versus no. I mean, if you've upgraded windows, it might affect it a little bit. Quality is better than it was before. You know, the value. That's right. Everybody's value is going to come up. Yeah. Just yeah. because of the market. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, the, but, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're paying more tax. No, because then you factor in that grand list to the, to the budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, the, and it comes down, actually, because there's more. Mm -hmm. more the, the only way tax rate, rate comes stuff. down yeah. because right. you're basically spreading your budget over more dollars. Because the grand list goes up. The, o the only way that you could pay more taxes would be, like we were just yeah. talking about last year and this year as well, that our grand list has increased. Um, the only way that you could pay more taxes would be our grand list comes, it will significantly like Rick was saying, it will come up significantly. So 
make it up. If your house is worth $200,000, maybe it's worth 250 or three, right? That doesn't mean that you're gonna pay more money unless the town decides to take advantage of that budget right. and increase, let's say, yeah. let's say you had more, you have a higher <laughs> grand list and you say we want more services, right? So you could theoretically pay more if that happened. I don't see that happening with our current town manager. No, but I'm just, I'm just being on, you know, just so that you know that yeah. it could happen. It, it doesn't usually happen. It's, yeah. it's usually yeah. just a base, baseline to do it, but yeah. it could, you know. Yeah. So but, it, um, as long as we don't all say, well, now that all these houses are worth all kinds of money, we would really like uh, in a something else and a, you know, but if we, if we continue the services that we have, you'll see that my property value went up quite a bit, but my tax, mm -hmm. my tax rate came down, and it should offset. Off, yeah. And, and there will be some people that might pay a little more and a little less, but yeah. the majority and of us should be. And there's an entire process, too. I don't want anyone to think that it's inequitable. Or So if you go through the process mm -hmm. and, and you're unhappy, you, everybody's going to get a reappraisal notice. Mm -hmm. There's time You can come and talk to the listers. There's a whole process to grieve so that you can, and in this case, you'll be sitting down with the listers and, and a representative from the company doing the reappraisal. Mm -hmm. And um, I can speak, I had our house, we went through a reappraisal um, in our town, I live in Brookfield, and we had built a new house recently within the last five years. And um, I did go and talk to them, but they had done such a good job. I didn't, I, I thought the value was fair based on the market. I knew what I could get for it, and but just went and asked some questions and, and it was fine. They're very helpful, very user friendly, and but there is a process, so if you're not happy and the listers don't, you know, whatever, you have a place to grieve, and, and so there is a process for everybody to be heard. Where, and currently, because I sit on the school board as well, so at the town, like right now, with the uh, common level of appraisal percentages, so they go a percent of baseline, um, where we actually are getting hurt in Bethel right now is on the school end of things, because the school's calculations uh, for formula it is way different than the town. I mean, the town is a very basic calculation which says, here's, here's your baseline, here, here's your local revenue, which is dog licenses and things yeah. like that, <laughs> and, then, and then here and here is your tax rate, right? It's very simple. The, the school has a lot of things that factor into their budget. So the first thing is the state will establish an equalized pupil pool rate, which will say, we're gonna give you $15,000 for every child that is in that school for the full year. So. Uh, if, talking middle. If of they stay yeah. all year. <laughs> so, so they will send you a, an amount. And then there's another piece of it that deals with, with the state yield rates. So, um, so like right now where real estate's really good because everything's based on real estate at the educational level, then the yield is higher. And then they look at the common level of appraisal. So right now where our common level of appraisal is out of whack, we are at 88%, I think they sent the card out yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. so, right. so baseline's 100%, so we're at 88, which is below. And when we talked about those trigger points where um, assessment comes into things, it's 85%. It forces you to have a reappraisal. So right now, for instance, when you see the school one, the state gave us about $1,000 more a child this year to factor into our, um, our budget. And the bond yield rates were, I don't know what the percent was, but the bond yield rates were quite a bit higher. So the school actually was looking really good. Like, you know, the budget is, um, you know, the budgets are much higher. So the budget's going up by, you know, $400,000. But with everything being, the bond yield rate being higher and equalized people being higher, it would have been something like a, you know, eight or 10 cent um, reduction in the tax rate. But where the common level of appraisal is, is so far out of whack right now, we're on the, on the negative side of that, is now it brought that from, in Bethel, from being an eight or 10 cent give back to being a, I think it's gonna cost us about a half a cent so that's the difference in what those common level of appraisals can do. Wow. Now, if our common level of appraisal was at 100, you would get that back. And you don't see that at the town level as much because no. the formula is way more complicated at the school. But, like but that's just kind of, you know, 
if to understand what that the value of the, the value list. of having your grand list be very accurate yeah. with the market. And I mean, how many times in your day have you seen the market change in such a dr dramatic fashion that it triggered the grand list like this? Probably two or three times, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Short amount of time. The last time was in oh, uh, 2005, 2006, mm -hmm. um, but not like it jumped this year. And people, people are going to be shocked when they get their reappraisal. Oh yes, yeah. they're going to say, "Oh my God!" But they have to be educated that that's not at this tax rate. Right. right. Exactly. Well, what will rate. happen is we take that information and then we reset mm -hmm. yeah. everything. So you say, yeah. based on that grand list, this is what the pennies would be. Yeah. Then you go from. from not, like you said, this was it's an equalization. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when you process. have a property that Bethel's valued at four hundred to 450,000 and it sells for like 1.4 million. I mean, mm -hmm. who could yeah. come up with that? I mean, it's, it's right. just, there's a couple that, you know, and, and we've seen it, people paying two and three times what houses are valued at cash and it's. Mm -hmm. Or, or if you nuts. would have, you know, say last year when building prices were really high, if you built a new house and put it on the, you know, you built a new house, you know, next to your neighbor that might have been almost a similar house, but you're paying that much more because of the house value yeah. of, of that new house and what it costs. And um, yeah. so that's kind of that that's the high level look at the budget. So um, hopefully um, if you were following, you know, that cost increase of 263,000, you know, all those pieces in there is, is how we got to that. Um, and the um, the, the breakdown for town meeting day is essentially um, if, if we're looking at just, if, if you're looking at article um, 10, um, 13, and 14, uh, which is usually the articles that are on every single year. That's the human services piece, the baseline budget, and the White River Valley Ambulance, then that is a 2.3 cent increase. Um, over last year. And if you look at adding in um, Article 11 for, for the library, Article 12, Let's and see. Article 15, then that would add an additional 2.8 cents if those all three get in there. And then if you wanted to do the math individually, <laughs> approximately 20, every $21,000 you add or subtract to the budget is one penny. So that's kind of how that. So just a quick question. Yep. Um, Teresa and I exchanged emails towards the end of December. Yep. And to talk about um, the increase that just the library would create. Yep. Um, and I think we talked about uh, $12.70 per 100,000 um, dollars of house value. So say for a you know, $200,000 house. It would be just over twenty-five dollars a year. Is that yeah, right? Because we figured, let's see, we are. So, so point zero one three is the estimated tax rate. Do you have your point zero one three? Um, hold on. Um. You want the grand list value? So just if you put that in, that's about. Just a library extra twenty seven thousand five hundred dollar one. It's right mm -hmm. here. It's point zero. Right, because yeah. the other it's piece is tax. already included in the baseline mm -hmm. yep. town right. budget. Yeah, it's one point three pennies. Yeah, so point zero one three on which the tax is, rate you divide by which the dollar amount would be on a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, so you take two hundred and fifty thousand times point zero one three. Point zero one three. Did you divide by hundred? So that's $32.50. Okay. On a $250,000 house. Yep. Okay. Does that sound like what I said? If not, just send me an email. That's like, roughly, I mean, okay, that's, yeah. Okay. And that's we had talked about, you know, yeah. pieces of, you know, like a $100,000 chunk as opposed yep. to 250000 Okay. So there you go. that's about, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Not going to be any $100,000 homes left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. Well, it's like that. It always reminds me of there was a, there was a skit that was done, I don't know, it, a little bit before my time. But it was um, Dan Aykroyd and 
Chevy Chase. It was on Saturday Night Live back in the 70s. late 70s, early 80s when they did the inflation <coughs> skit. You remember that where they're yeah, they're saying, you know, wouldn't you, would, you know, because inflation was out of control at that oh, point, yeah, yeah. and they were kind of mocking it like, you know, wouldn't you like to be a millionaire, and wouldn't you like to own a, you know, a $15,000 cigar and a $20,000 suit, you know? <laughs> it was just kind of mocking of how, you know, how that was getting out of control, and it kind of reminded me of, you know, just the way things have exploded here in the last, you know, couple of years. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. <laughs> so that's where we're at. Um, any questions in regards to either any pieces there? Just one stupid question. Which I don't see the sand, uh, the the salt. Is that included in the uh, next page? No, Sorry, it's hidden right at the bottom of one page. Yeah, right at the bottom of the page, right there. Look at page three. Well, Thirty-eight has all the gravel, sand, and all that good stuff. Uh, I don't see a salt. In the budget? Yeah. Okay, it should be. They got kind of cut off, I think. Oh no! Try not to. Page uh, thirty-six. Salt. Okay, yep. And then the next page that you see, it doesn't count. Then you've got to flip over to page 38 to be actually be the next page in that How part of the budget. Get then that top line is gravel. I don't know how that Then happens. sand. Mm -hmm. uh, Some, yeah. Somehow, okay. somehow. Oh, I see what happened. Page one of two. Got stuck actually, with that one. Yeah, page two got put behind page one. Oh, jeez. Right. So Thank salt's you. on page one of eight. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So where it says page one of two on page 35, page, page, page 37, 37 is two of two. Yeah, yeah, it's two page two of two of the revenues. Dang. All right. Well. You just rubbing salt in the wound? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that was just a good example of what happened with everything, the sure. salt one. Yep. Um, but no, all right, well that's a good point. We'll have to point that out. But that's on mix up, thank you. All right, so I did the, oh you can see it, look at that. So is this where we ask questions? You, yeah, fire away. If it has budget related, let's do it. Okay. Um, all right, on page 12, you were mentioning the grants. And on page 12, there's a grant that says State of Vermont Recreation Facility Grant Program for bike rack seating and ex exit ladders for pool. Um, the grant is 1487 and it has to be matched. Mm -hmm. Where is that matching money coming from? Coming out of our budget. It's coming out of the budget budget. Budget budget. Okay. All right, very good. So, and then if you turn, um, to page 40, and um, and then um, right at the top, um, it's uh, it's the Recreation Improvement Fund, actual as of 11-1-2022, uh, mm -hmm. you okay. get 2,500. Do you put in every quarter? Yep. So? Is that what you do? Yep. Okay. Bye, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Bye, Lisa. Yep. Okay. And then on page 48. Yep. Um, okay. Um, on page 48, um, it says um, that I know you would put in a a hundred thousand for pool stuff, um, but that was only just you yeah. were you so were two fifty in there. So we just don't know, and it sounded like well, obviously COVID and inflation all that. But we heard back originally from the Gunite person. I mean, their estimate was way out of whack, but it also mm -hmm. made us realize that a hundred thousand is wasn't going to touch right. it. So, so but to change that from 100000 to 250000 Just It's just a placeholder. And that's why okay. it says estimate okay. only. Because we just don't know yet. You don't know yet. No. Okay. Mm. So, and then, um, so it's not, that's not going to all come out of the improvement fund. Or 
you're going to get grants and fundraising to do that too? Well, I'm not sure about the fundraising aspect, but we may get, obviously if there's a grant, we'll look for it. But until we have a better estimate, we just wanted people to know yeah. right. we have to keep our eye on the right. fact that something's going to happen. Something okay. has to give here to the pool. So, yes, we certainly would look for grants and... Um, We'll see, you know, once we have a better price tag, we'll have a better idea. Is it going to be a capital campaign? Is it going to be a grant? Is it a loan? We just don't know yet because yeah, we don't know what I we're... I just figured it must have been a change of... Yeah, well, once we saw the price, I mean, the guy had a... It was a crazy price, but also made us realize that, oh, okay. So, yeah. you have interest earned... Um, I just see that. And, and there's none on the other years... But all of a sudden you have interest. I know, I just saw that, Ellie, and I'm not, I, you know what it is, is it's the balance. Interest, I don't know that, because I looked at this and it was right. It does the beginning balance. That's if you, I think, is, uh, or the 284 plus the 10 is the 294, and it said zero before that, so I'm gonna have to look. I don't have my spreadsheet in front of me, because we can't go from a negative 142, 405. Um, right. You know, so that's there's something in there that's messed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I yeah, me too. There's no interest in the yeah. Base uh, see, of I'm gonna make a note. 2022 or 2023. Don't you get any interest then? We would have. Yeah. 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 So let me look at page. I just have to make a note. Page 48. We do it when it's spreadsheet. Yes. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. Just, yeah. Right. It jumped. Jumped. It did, and it's. Me too, because I yeah. look at that and I compare it. It just with our, seems really out of whack. It is out of whack because if you compare it, I do it and then I compare it with. I just want to know where you put your money to get that kind of interest. I know, and then I compare it to page. Well, let's just put it this way: the bank error is not in your favor, Ellen. That's so right. And then I compare that, that number's going down. Yeah, because <laughs> it has to compare to page fifty. So cash out now if you get a chance. So. And page 51 ties out to the 87,595, so I'm not sure. I'll have to look at that. Okay, so then, um, so, and then, on, yeah, on that year, the 51, yep. it, you, you talk about the expenses. Yep. Um, the, the benches of 3,000 offsets from the, the grant that we got. Right, but so there's that, still a revenue and still an expense. Oh, okay. so, yeah. And, but uh, what are the fundraising expenses? I, I wasn't sure. I think it was the hot dogs and the, I mean, you have the list. I right, gave you the list. Right, right. And I... T-shirts. T-shirts and hot and the hot, hot dogs. and okay, printing. Okay, so I wasn't sure. I came up with eight, 18. Uh, 1,800, but I just didn't know if there was anything else. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, so, but if you look no, at this. That's what it would have been. Yeah, if you look at the spreadsheet, you're going to okay. see. So it would have been the benches would have been 3,000, yeah. the okay. hot dogs, the t-shirts, the um, okay. whatever else you, you know. Okay. All right, I just wanted to Yep, okay. absolutely. And then, um, and then I have a question of... Um, you're doing the replacement of the Geico Well House. Yep. Is that going to have any effect on the recreation center during the summer? No, Geico is across the street, next door, the across the street from the school. So we're talking about the Well House. So it's on um, Rene Turgeon Leroy Carrier's property across from the school. So it has nothing to do oh, with that. Oh, okay. Yep. So it's not going to affect. No, nothing any. to do with that. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's okay. That little, yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay, because I didn't know. Because I know whatever. No, nope, nothing to do with that. Trucks were gonna be. It's not to do with the well. It's not to do with the reservoir. Oh. Okay. That. I mean, there is a reservoir that's gonna get some work done to it. Okay. But it's not gonna affect the anything no. that we're doing. No, because it has its own road up okay. to it and all that. So. All right. Thank you very much. Should be much. fine. <coughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. It does. What did you say, Dave? Water might have comes off that reservoir comes down to the GW parking lot. It doesn't go anywhere near the wreck area. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. So you're in the clear. I wasn't even looking. I'm sorry. Was, there hasn't been anybody online. No. So I don't see no, She left. It was Jamie Daniels, but okay. she's gone a while ago. Okay. Any, any other questions budget related in-house in here? Okay. 
Anything at the select board level? Just, I know, we gotta hurry up. We're gonna okay. do the water bond. Hearing none, we'll uh, move on. We got the water bond, um, famously phase two of the water line improvements. Yep. So you can, I put on the screen, but you also, I gave you guys all hard copies. So, um, this, so next week we'll have another informational hearing on Monday night. And um, so this, so we can see if we go down page two, that this is where we are. This is the bond vote's gonna be from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. on town meeting day at the school where you normally vote. Absentee ballots are available. Um, so we're gonna be doing two inch, four inch, eight inch water mains on Sand Hill, Bicentennial, Highland, Graham, and Crystal Drive. Means new water services, curb stops. Um, we have to put in a new water main crossing under the railroad, which is near Babes, between Babes and the um, hardware store. Um, we also are gonna be building a new booster pump station on for Crystal Drive. It's actually gonna be on Dick Adams' property. Okay. And um, because currently, the, if you live on Crystal Drive, um, if you are running water downstairs, you can't wa run water upstairs. They have no water pressure, and that's one of the reasons that the state has said to us, until we take care of that problem, we cannot add any more users to the system. Um, we're also gonna do the replacement of Geico Wellhouse, which is the one we were just talking about that's on Renee and Leroy's um, land. And we are gonna refurbish the Boulevard water storage tank um, that needs some work. Uh, so we're having a company that's gonna come in and uh, they'll clean it. They'll also do some work to seal it and to take care of any of the you know minor issues, nothing so it's crazy. So reservoir on the town. Yep, Boulevard, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I, that's not the boulevard. No. Well, the boulevard tank is um, up uh, by the town. Yeah, office. boulevard no. tank is up here. No, boulevard boulevard wells over here. But that's that's Geico. That's Geico. The boulevard's by the crossing the town office. That's right. By Pivine. Yeah. 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 I'm, conf I'm, I'm confused because I'm I'm thinking where where the location of this tank is. Oh yeah, that's not right. where the. Pumps. Called. Yeah. Yeah. Called. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. So um, we talk about why the improvements are necessary, and there's a nice little picture here. This is actually something that we found um, near the depot apartments in the street, and I have GW Tatro and the engineers were like, "What is this?" Somehow they, had, you know, they managed to connect like three different um, buildings using this crazy connector. Um, <laughs> Obviously, the water mains are old. There's no work had been done in a very long time. And we have a lot of the water line that we have is the two inch galvanized. So that's why we're able to qualify for some of the lead subsidy. That's why we did, you know, we got quite a bit of that in the last project and we're getting that again in this project. They'll do a dollar for dollar match. So what goes in, they pay for it going in or coming out and going back in. Um, so that will be taken up. And obviously, the, the, he's saying the requirements here, the Crystal Drive, which we just talked about, and then the Geico Wellhouse. They just, that's the one that's down by um, Terzian's that needs to be dealt with because it is, um, has deteriorated and it's you know, taken some flood impacts. It's also kind of funny because it's like this three-tiered thing instead of being all on one level. So when it floods, if, if it floods, it's, it's going to flood again. So we just got to think about, you know, there was a prolonged period of time in the town where, where we didn't do any upgrades to our water infrastructure. So, right. you know, there's, from what we're being told by the experts, you know, your water system is on like a 40 year rotation. Um, so you should be doing certain segments of it, you know, every five to eight years, but, you know, because I think we said there's five or eight, seg yeah. eight segments. So, yeah, there's gonna be so every five to eight years, we should be doing a segment of this. Yeah. And we haven't done anything in a very long time. So yeah. like that picture shows that that's some of the issues that we have there. Um, and as we found with waterline phase one, you know, we used to spend a lot of time digging up to fix water breaks. Yeah. Um, and because you know, that's a lot of a lot of wasted time. That's a lot of wasted resources because the pumps at the water station are going longer. If you get mm -hmm. you know major leaks, um, and we've already seen that paying dividends just by we're not you know 
Electric. <laughs> Probably just jinxed us all, but yeah. you know, digging a hole tomorrow. We're not digging the holes in the ground as much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, it's a combination of the old infrastructure that should have been changed out that needs to be changed out, yes. as well as the state when they come in and do the periodic um, do your inspection. Uh, audits on your water license, as they say, you need to, you know, X, Y, Z needs to get done. Yes. So these are pieces that the state has determined that we need to do as a town if this bond vote passes or doesn't. Mm -hmm. So if we don't pass the bond vote, we still have to do these things. It's just gonna be at our own dime. 100% mm -hmm. our own dime, so. Yeah. And, huh? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and like the railroad crossings, uh, you know, on one of these pages, on page six, it says these, these are old, 1900s to 1950s, so that we're dealing with that. And let me just tell you, talk about dealing with the railroad. That's, that's and then a, like we're seeing with like Crystal Drive, for instance, is there were pieces, segments of the system that were constructed that didn't necessarily meet proper Specs, engineering standards, you know, yeah. so uh, to get pressure to certain elevations were not done correctly, um, you know, over years or, uh, you know, a lot of times you see a developer maybe years ago put in so many houses and then the town took over those, that area, but maybe it wasn't developed the way it should have maybe been. Maybe it wasn't you pressure so, tested to see So, you know, Crystal Drive out. is an example of that, that yeah. the town at some point took that over and, and there's not adequate pressure to run your systems yeah. um, as you go up the line there, so. And there's a picture on page seven, oh sorry Dave, that shows interior deterioration in Boulevard Tank and it was built in the 1950s and mm -hmm. you know, those are certainly very expensive to replace. So is the hammer laminated over or uh, yeah, is that just I don't in know. the it tank? It was just in the tank, I guess, with the pictures that the um, person took. So we're gonna to have to dig up Main Street again to do that railroad? Railroad crossing? Nope, we're going to only piece Under. that's going to get dug up is right next to Babes, where there's like that wall okay. right there that's going okay. through, and we're going to try to, our, we're going to directionally bore that so we're not coming in. No, so that's just there. Yeah, say, like no, 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 we're, we're not doing that. So we're not, we're not doing that. So on page eight, it shows, um, you know, we have an aging and corroded equipment. Um, this, is, this is the pump house near. Um, Jones, we've been talking about, it's not built to withstand flooding and it's got some structural deterioration. So we are going to be tearing this one down and rebuilding a new one. And it's going to be less dangerous to get in and out of. It'll be all on one level. And we've worked with the homeowners. We have a signed easement to, you know, where the placement's going to be and mm -hmm. it will look, you know, match your home and those things. Um, so the big one is everybody wants to know is what's it going to cost? So we are passing, working hard to pass a bond vote for $2.5 million. Um, you can see they lay out the construction is around $1.8 million. Uh, there's a 15% contingency fee, um, engineering, and other cost, 76. This also includes um, that there'll be someone overseeing the project you know, there's be an on-site engineer, which is very helpful um, to us, someone overseeing the work, making sure that the contractor does it, you know, per specification, and, and um, so that's what we're looking at here. We talk about funding opportunities. We were lucky last time. We had a 2.8, we had $2.8 million worth of work done for 900, and 39,000 because we got so much aid and assistance. I think that obviously we were hoping that would happen again because we've all heard about all the federal money that's pouring into the state and this and that, but because at the same time what happened is the median household income in Bethel and across the state really raised, which is a great thing, everybody's making more money, but when they you know, we say that, right? But then you're paying more gas and so, like, you know. But anyway, so the median household income comes up. So what happens is then the state with their, you know, formulas say that we're, we don't get a disadvantage subsidy that we qualified for last time. We no longer qualify for that. So what we are looking at this time is we're looking for approximately $425,000 in subsidy from the state. That's what we're estimating right now, and that's just based on solely lead replacement, the galvanized replacement. If it's more than that, great. 
Mm -hmm. You know, but that's where we're at right now. And what they're and what we're also anticipating is a 40-year loan um, at a 1.5% interest rate. We were lucky with the $2.8 million project because that $939,000 loan we got for 40 years was 0% interest. So we are openly admitting we are not looking at as good of a package in aid that we were looking at before. Not that we haven't tried, it's just this is, you know, the state tells you what they're going to give you. and. This but it's still a better package than if we have to do it it's ourselves. It's still four hundred and twenty-five thousand um, dollars and a reduced interest rate that we didn't have before. Um, and they will give us a subsidy for our planning loan, so that looks like around uh, forty-nine thousand dollars that they are going to give us. So, because we looked at this, I talked to the engineer and the state about we can't. Obviously, there's less users on the system than there is taxpayers. So in the prior package, they wouldn't allow us to put any of the money onto the taxpayers. It had to go onto the users. And it worked out to be a pretty good deal. So it was all right. This time, we talked to them. Because we were getting less aid, I wanted to know how that, if that would impact our financing from the state. So what we did was, we looked at the possibility of having the users pay for the water upgrades, but putting the road construction onto the entire tax base. Because we would have, if we need paving or gravel roads, we would normally pay for that out of taxes anyways. So to try to give the users, you know, to try to see if we could take some pressure off the users. Um, so that's the way, you know, we looked at, we looked at this. Um, to look at how we could cost share. Obviously, everyone has to vote on it. This is a question I get. Why aren't just the users voting? But everybody has to vote on it because it's the good faith and credit of the entire town that stands behind the bond note. Mm -hmm. And um, so currently, we're saying uh, the typical residential water customer pays $126.04 per quarter. And we expect them to see to see a, an increase of about $26.14 per quarter. Um, and that's, that's us taking out all the road work, hydrants, and related costs for, for the road work. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna that on a $250,000 house is gonna cost a taxpayer <clears throat> $18 a year. So as you can spread it over more users. Um, and then, like it's, the, <clears throat> it's difficult because they've had the rates had not been raised in a long time, and then we did have to do a big hike about oh, four, years four years ago, four years ago, ten percent, because people were paying a twenty-five dollar vacancy rate. Well, that wasn't even covering the base operating costs, so we mm -hmm. have changed the rate. Um, I did hear that uh, someone was upset because. There is an increase this year over last year of um, delinquencies in water. We do not calculate water rates based on the delinquencies. So that is not a factor into this. You are not paying because somebody else hasn't paid. We readily admit we had, uh, you know, certainly with Tim's death, we had bigger fish to fry as to just cover the, the job and to get moving. And we, um, a couple of them are bigger users and I, it's all collectible and, and mm -hmm. we will do that. So, but I don't want people to think that you're paying for that. You're not, we'll, you know, and it is collectible and it will be collected. So don't, I don't want someone to think that, that, that just because someone else has an $11,000 delinquent bill, we'll get the money. And um, <laughs> that doesn't affect. Yeah, but you know, they got eight people in the house versus one and they pay exactly the same thing. Exactly, and that's a conversation Bethel's had for a long time, and that is something that they've talked about, and I know at the $2.8 million, we're looking at that, I think it was, we were looking, I think if we metered the whole system, it'd probably be like a million bucks or more by the time we paid for meters and went in and, you know, did everybody's house. Um, you know, I certainly have said openly that it seemed, you know, we have some people metered, and it looks like 
you know, if we were going to start, if Bethel was going to start metering, I think they need to start with the high users and kind of get it accurate and kind of meter down to make sure that the businesses and multiple mm. family apartments are, are, you know, paying what they need to pay. So, and the, and the challenge with our system or is is when you're talking a cost of something, you have the fixed cost and then you have the variable cost. And being that we are such a small, um, the, the water service is a smaller identity in our town. Mm -hmm. It's not like a big city. So we have a lot of fixed costs. So regardless of how much water Dave uses at his house or not, set like 75, let's just round terms, so 75 to 80% of the costs are fixed no matter if we turn the faucet on at home or not. That's the, you know, mm -hmm. th that's the facility, that's the, the individuals running the facility, um, and then the variable cost of what I guess we could control as, as consumers is very, very small. And when we looked at things like water meters, to add on that much more fixed cost at the end of the day did not pay back the water users on the variable cost. If anything, what would have happened is you would have been getting charged more for water oh, nice. and then turned around and had to use your water less or wouldn't have the ability to use the water as frequently that you would want unless you wanted to get charged more. <laughs> so it was kind of, in our situation, a little bit of a, a double you know, whammy for, for individuals. Where a city where you know you have you know, tens of thousands of users, you, it makes sense because that you have mm -hmm. a lot more variable piece of that mm -hmm. uh, with, with this. Oh. And, and on the first project, and usually Paul has the number, but on the first project that we did, I want to say that we had advertised it, that the water users were going to, their rates were going to go up like $14 a quarter or somewhere around there. Twelve. Twelve. So we had advertised that in the bond vote that it was going to go up roughly around $12 a quarter that actually went up about two or three. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So again, we got really lucky on a lot of the financial packages that we had gotten. So I guess in some way we've already kind of saved the users some money from the last time, uh, where this time those uh, potentials aren't there. Now we're still hopeful that maybe something will happen, but yeah. but we have to be realistic with everybody yeah. to say this is, you know, prepare for this. Yeah, because this is what if we, we can see. do better, we will obviously do better. But we'll do we did, you know, we did get the. $600,000 from Senator Sanders. So that, you know, while the water system is going to pay for just the water part, mm -hmm. you know, like the 600,000 or now 750 because of our share will pay for, you know, the rebuild of the road, the storm water and you know, everything. on the else. tax and the things. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So construction is planned for this summer. So that's why we're having the bond vote on town meeting day. Obviously, we're hopeful that it passes so that we can move forward because, you know, part of this too is that the Planning Commission and, and Rick and Denise and I can all attest that we are working with Two Rivers to um, in create an increase in density so more, you know, to have some more flexibility, maybe more housing, more. <laughs> but we, we can do that, the PC, but yet the state says we can't add any users. So it's, we're kind of like fighting ourselves. So. Um, and, and then one thing that, um, to look at that was significant in this one is, and, and again, if we pass it or don't pass it, we still have to do a majority of these upgrades. Now, there might be some that we could push off, but a majority of them have to get done um, yeah. to keep our water license. But one of the biggest drivers on this isn't necessarily the cost of the project, but it's the interest of the project that we're going to pay. And there's a huge difference between 0% interest on $2 million and one point. 5% interest on $2 million. And, and what that means is at the end of our life of our loan, we're going to have like $800,000 in interest on this job. Right, but it's going to save us about $260,000 yeah, over the No, life. no yeah, but yeah. I'm saying, and we've all seen that with rates going yeah. up. So it's one of those things that we're paying more this time around because we've all seen, you know, the federal government has raised rates, you know, consecutively, mm -hmm. I don't know, what, eight quarters now or whatever it is. Um, and likely is going to continue to do that, um, and things are only going to get more expensive. So if we did delay this somehow, we're probably going to be footing yeah. the bill on higher interest. And as well as we don't know what incentives are going to be coming, because some of the money is funneled from the feds through the EPA into the state. So that money dries up for like 
galvanized line or lead replacement, then the state's not going to be offering us much either. So at this point, it's kind of taking advantage of what we have. So And, and a lot of that federal <clears throat> money that, that we hear about is supposed to dry up in 2024. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what you know, what else is going to happen. But kind of this was just an interesting picture um, on nice page 13. This was actually something that we found in Main Street. This is an old piece of wooden water line mm -hmm. back in the day. And uh, we actually found mm -hmm. this on Main Street. It was still in the ground, not being used, but it was still there. Mm -hmm. So OK, so it was not being used. No. Yeah. And then the final page, uh, <laughs> this is our, um, yeah, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? Our 70-year-old <laughs> water pump at Geico. So this has not been replaced for 70 years. So that's a picture of that. That's what um, he put on the back. So Are you sure? <clears throat> yep, that's what I got from the engineers. I asked him today, this afternoon, about 2 o'clock, I was on the phone with him and asked him. And he said that was when that water pump went to hell and went to the flood. Yeah. You should have heard it when we first finally got the power to it. I bet. And did they and refurbish the it or something? They, they must have. They, yeah. they, did, they pulled it and did something. Yeah, yeah they, they must have refurbished, refurbished it. This was the picture. But we could not. We, you couldn't stand in that room. It was that so pump, loud. But it was the only pump that would run yeah. and give water. Yeah, it was yeah. the only one left. Exactly. Until it went. Yeah. So hopefully on town meeting day, you know, bond passes and we trying to get the information out and really appreciate people are coming to hear about it and ask questions and we're trying to do, we've done stuff online, put this presentation out, um, also send it to all the committee chairs, uh, it's on Facebook, it's on Front Porch Forum, it's on our website to try to, you know, make sure that people are educated about the vote. So um, what do you anticipate down the line of future projects? I actually have a list um, on the corner of my desk. I found it, something that Tim had drawn up. And um, so we have a couple, so there'll be a break. Obviously, we've done we'll these very close together, yes. Yeah. And so there's going to be a break. The next we have <laughs> projects Maine. left are going to be <clears throat> South Main, you know, from the town office out. And since the state paved recently, that's nothing we're going to be doing tomorrow. North also, Maine. the North Main is the other piece and River Street. Yeah. So we do have another three pieces. And it was um, so, but I think that the space of time might have been don't hold me to this. I want to say it was five years or so until we did like another piece, certainly. So Pleasant Street is good? Well, Pleasant up, Street is actually, um, up we to the fire station. Yeah. The fire mm -hmm. station on that stretch was brand new, I don't know, 10 years ago maybe? Yeah, and I'm not Eight, sure if, if what piece, yeah, I'd have to look at but Tim's it piece. At your, at either yours, house, or Mine's house. last one, yeah. Yeah, and, and we did do well. some work there in the last project. We put in a couple sampling stations, mm -hmm. and but, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had any, you know, issues with that. I'll have to look at Tim's list. I actually made a copy of it and put it in the select board's packet for our next meeting um, to, so, and, um, but I had just mm -hmm. found it the other day and shared it with Richard. So it won't be doing, we won't be doing it in another two years like this, so. So we're doing Graham Street. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right off River Street? It is. Okay, so we're going, that just be a piece of that, and then yep. later yep. we'll. Mm -hmm. Later do the main. Later ones. do the main, yep. So it's, um, we have Graham, Bicentennial, Sand Hill, and um, what we're anticipating is the DWSRF program won't pay for a full lane, full width pave generally, but obviously with Graham, we don't think that's a problem. And um, <laughs> we, so there's gonna be, there may be a situation on Highland, <clears throat> depending. Up, on foot. You up, there? up where? Highland? I think uh, that road is literally dropped on foot. Yeah, well, we also, I asked Richard about it the other day, and uh, we think that the water line goes right down the middle of Highland. Do you think that the water line is broke there? Because in my house, I happen to live on Highland Avenue, mm -hmm. and the pipes literally rattled. Every, and it's not when I'm drawing water, it's not, hmm. I can just be sitting there and you hear this. Weird sounds like, so there's pressure getting in the line. So I'll ask Richard to take a peek, because that's definitely what it sounds like, is that, because if there's pressure, if there's air getting into the line, I would think that would do it. I had someone stay there, they literally get up in the middle of the night oh, and uh, looked under the bed because they thought <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll say Highland Avenue. I'll ask um, 
Right. And I would think, Most you know, are. assuming that we're still around after all, you know, down the road is, you know, I guess the next piece would be to get whatever the next piece of this puzzle is, that South Main Street or whatever, and probably get the project shovel ready so that when there's an opportunity to take funds from <clears throat> the federal government or state government that we can say we get a project ready. Because mm -hmm. um, as we found out, That's it, what we did here. it takes us about a year, mm -hmm. maybe even a year and a half to get a project to shovel ready so that you can yeah. take on funds. Because if you wait until the funds are available and then you try to do it, the funds are dried yeah. up by then. So, um, yeah. so I think that's and what that's, our goal will be is yeah. we're talking about pausing, but I think we're still going to go well, ahead, do some of the engineering to get yeah. it ready so that then we can take advantage of it when, when the yeah. opportunity Which is what we did so. here. When we knew that, you know, that president, that the presidents were changing, we knew that a lot of times when they do that, there's infrastructure money that comes in depending, you know, when a new president takes over. Obviously, that's what President Biden did. So we, we were already in design for phase two. We can get a planning loan, and I think they give us five years, basically, of no interest until we, mm -hmm. um, and then they give us some forgiveness later when we finance it through construction. But yeah, it's it's all about the timing, and that's how we were able to get. You know, I think we got a good deal last time because the state was putting a lot of pressure on us, mm -hmm. and this time because we were, you know, we were trying, we were ready for the project to come, so we were already on um, the priority list. So you know, we always do keep an eye on that and see, you know, what's trying to see what's coming down the mm -hmm. pike for money. But yeah, and when you can do a planning loan at no interest, and you got five years to do your project, it just makes sense to kind of start looking ahead and, and we did have a master plan done a few years ago um bethel did have one done a few years ago so we and we were just richard and i were revisiting that the other day looking at you know what are going to be the priorities and it could switch it could be all of a sudden if we have a bunch of breaks on one side you know one thing that bethel is blessed with is a lot of water pressure so we fix something and there's something weak down the road and blowing it back out so um mm -hmm. you're certainly blessed with good water pressure so <clears throat> that could be. I'm actually going to sit down with engineers on Wednesday to see the plans. Um, do you know where your shutoff is now? Across the street from where I live on somebody else's lawn. Yes. Then yes, <laughs> because we had that. <laughs> that's why I wonder when it says yeah. curb stop. Yep. That's that's what it is. You will get a curb stop that's on your on your side of the road. Yep. Yeah. We and went through that with here. We the depot. We couldn't. They couldn't figure that thing out. It ended up, there was one of them that was like, the pipe had gone out. I think they avoided some ledge and came back and somebody's, one of the shows was across the street mm -hmm. and it was kind of convoluted. So yes, yeah, you should. Yeah. Oh, are they on yeah. Dick's? Oh, hopefully he doesn't mess with you and try shutting your water off just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, do, so. Yeah, so it could be that yeah. there's, it could be air in your line, it could be in your service line, or it could be in the water line where and, and those know, are, it crosses the road. Those so. are some common complaints mm -hmm. that we've had is a combination of we haven't done anything with our infrastructure in so long, and then, you know, maybe buildings have been constructed since then or whatever since the last, mm -hmm. I mean, we're starting to think of, you're looking at the, you know, a lot of this stuff infrastructure was before 1950. So think of all the houses that were constructed after that. Mm -hmm. And like, I know my house out on Pleasant Street when they put in the new water line, when we were having nonstop breaks out there, my water shut off was on the opposite side of Route 12. So I would have to, you know, I'm not digging up through Route 12 <laughs> to get to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those were some things. And then when they put that in, now I have a curb stop that's on the corner of my property as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but. And there were so many places that didn't even know where it was. Yeah. I remember one time out in Pleasant Street, didn't they have a curb stop from a neighbor? They just had to turn it off at the, you know, at the main. And we recently had um, to do that on Sand Hill. Yeah. We had to shut off several people just because one person was having a problem in their basement because we couldn't yeah. find their shut off. But I did want to say, um, as I was saying about uh, Highland and the paving, um, drinking water loans only let us do basically a trench patch. And then Richard said to me the other day, he said, I'm pretty sure Highland's water main goes right through the middle of the road. I was like, yes, because we might, uh, even if we have to put in a little bit of capital road money, you know, if the trench is gonna be so big, we might be able to make a deal to get a full pave, because what's gonna be the point of trenching, you know, come on, yeah, half your just road. Do it all at once. So I was very happy when he when he said where it was. So that's well, I'm really having trouble following it. Oh, I'm having. When you first turn on, it's a good 
Well, eight, 12 inches, but it's dropped. Yeah, okay, I'll have, I'll ma I made a note to have Richard, you know, take a peek at that and see what's, what's going on there. So, but hopefully um, bond passes and we put out to bid and we start construction and you all have new shutoffs and water line and paved road. <laughs> so it would be nice. It would be nice for, yeah, everybody deserves that, so. Okay, you can pave my road next. Well, not you. <laughs> you don't deserve it. I'm sorry. The, the ladies no, in town it deserve far, it. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. No we're, We are. We are paving We're going to pave your point seven nine miles of Christian Hill. <laughs> speaking speaking <laughs> of that, if we get to other business, I have one, que one request. Yeah. So I was just going to open it up now to um, public comment. So if there was... Any questions? Anybody wants to comment on anything? It doesn't have There's to be. two pumpkin-sized holes across from Scamble Lane. If you go up there in a truck like mine, mm -hmm. you end up being thrown out the window. On the, okay, across from Scammell, is that John McLean's? Am I no, right? next corner. Okay. Next corner. All right. That corner, it's uh, blue or whatever. Oh, Darlene's, yeah. Darlene's, and yep. the next, play, next road that goes down in is Scammell. Yeah, I know where Scammell is, so it's across the street from Scammell. It's right in the middle of the road, big, big holes. Mm. All right, in Christian, not yeah. So yeah, hopefully they could just throw some patch in there for at least for. I mean, holy crap! Yeah, I'll make mm. it out. So all right, we'll tell them. Well, it's like the Sand Hill. The only the only part of Sand Hill that's in good mm -hmm. shape is the patches we put in. The rest of the the rest of the road <laughs> fell apart. It's just the patches we put in. That's <laughs> yeah. right. That's right. Across from Scamalane, two big yeah. potholes. Okay, I'll right. I'll um let them know. I know. Well, they'll be filled, forget the storm they're talking about, they'll be filled in with snow and you'll be <laughs> smoothed over on that. Yeah, they'll be frozen um, back. So we'll let them know. Well, they're All talking right. about Thursday. Anything else? Any other public comment? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Time is it? 8.34. Okay. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you so much. So next month.